Hello, welcome to the eighth section of my Webflow course. Today, I want to show you how to do this scroll parallax effect using Webflow interactions. If we look at the design, we have this section right here, which is for the hero. And then we have this section right here for the parallax as well as for the gallery. So we're going to take care of this part and we're also going to put a new background and we're going to name that section compositions. Let's head back to Webflow to where we left off. And then for the body, let's add a new section. So I'm going to scroll down to layout and add a section. This section is going to be named compositions. And I'm going to go to the background properties, add a new background, choose the image and set it as background three. Select it, set to with auto. It's going to be from the top right and don't tile. The other thing we're going to do is something that has driven me crazy for a while, which is the padding between the hero content and these mockups from which I wanted to show you how to use components. But now we can finally move that stuff to another background like this. And we can set for the hero section to have a fixed height so that we can have some extra spacing to breathe. So in this case, I'm going to select the hero section and set to a height of 1500. And if I do that, it's going to make sure that I don't see anything cut off for the background. And this space that I have here was supposed to be reserved for some logo and some extra content. But for now, since we're focusing on techniques, we're going to stick to this and have a new background called composition and put the mockups right there. And while we're here, let's name the mockups to mockups. Much better. So let's get back to composition. And here we're going to add a new container. So I'm going to scroll down for the container, which is really good for adaptiveness. And it's going to sit right here. I re reordered it so that it's before the mockups. And I'm going to name that to desktop as a class and set the height to 500. So I have reserved this space to create my parallax effect. And I'm also going to add some extra margin of 200 from the bottom. So margin bottom 200, pushing down the content even more of the mockups. I just want to focus here. Inside this container, I'm going to add a bunch of images. Let's press A and then select an image. And that image is going to start with the mountains. So this one, I'm going to add more images. This time is going to be the clouds. And let's add another one. This one is going to be the tree. And add another one. And this one is going to be the laptop. So we have four images and they are stacking up. And because I set the desktop container to have a fixed size of 500, these images don't take physical space beyond 500. So the reason why I did this is because I want them to float using position absolute. They're not going to be taking physical space. Let's start with the mountains. I'm going to change this to position absolute. And you can see as soon as I did that, it's not taking physical, physical space. And therefore the cloud just took that space from here. So the clouds, the same way, 
position absolute also, but this time I want to have some top value and it's going to be 70. But where did it go? Well, it went at the very top here. As I mentioned in the previous session, you have to have some sort of a reference point. And that reference point is called the position relative. Otherwise, it's always going to take the whole canvas as a reference point. And so I'm going to select the section desktop as my reference point and set it to position relative. Therefore, the clouds is going to be top 70, so a margin from the top of 70 pixel from that reference, which is the container called desktop. And then let's go to the trees, this time position absolute as well. And the top position is going to be 150. For the laptop, it's going to be position absolute. And right now it's a little bit big, so I'm gonna set to a width of 450. And so this is what I have so far. Let's compare it to the actual design. So what we're noticing here is that we have the laptop that is in the middle. The mountains are fine, the clouds too, but the trees should be on the right. So let's make those tweaks in Webflow. Let's, first of all, not to get lost, we're going to name them. This one is going to be mountains. This one, clouds. Then the trees. And finally, the laptop. For the trees, I'm going to set the position from the right instead of auto, I'm going to set it to zero. So now it goes to the right side. For the laptop, I'm going to use my awesome technique, which is to do a left of 50% and then do a margin left of the width divided by two, which is 450 divided by two, but don't forget the minus so that it's not pushing to the right side. So minus 225. That's it. This is our setup. Usually when you want to do parallax, you want to have multiple elements, just like in real life. When you're moving in a car, you see the background and typically the front elements, such as the trees, are moving faster. And then you have the mountains in the back are moving slower. And that's what gives this really neat parallax effect. Let's go to the interactions and we want to create another element trigger and this time it has to be for the container called desktop. So when I click on the plus sign, make sure to have desktop selected and select while scrolling in view, which means that when you're scrolling and it's visible to the user, then the animation is going to be playing. So on scroll, create a play scroll animation. And here I'm going to create a new scroll animation called desktop. So from now I can just start my animation. I'm going to open desktop and then select mountains, click on a plus sign, and it's going to be a move transform. This is going to be very simple. It's going to move using the Y position. So from top to bottom or vice versa and at the zero scroll, which means that at the beginning, as soon as it hits the top part of the section, then it's going to start applying the animation and it's going to progress as you scroll. So at 0%, I'm going to set Y from zero to Y at 100% to minus 400. Let's see how that looks like. So you can see when I scroll, the mountains are moving up a little bit. It's kind of neat. I just need to apply the same at different speed, of course, for the other elements. Select clouds, add a scroll action. It's going to be move again. 
and this time is going to be from zero. Duplicate this, set to 100%, and to minus 200 in term of Y position. Next, for the trees, add a transform move from zero, duplicate this, and set it to Y 200, and this one is positive. So that's it. Let's preview this, and we're gonna scroll, we're gonna get into this space, and you can see a very nice parallax effect. It's very easy to set up. You can change the speed that you want, the elements that you want. I definitely recommend that you play with your own design. And I think this is one of the most fun things that I like to do when designing a website. Let's publish this. And voila, our website is starting to have more and more content and really, really cool interactions. Hopefully you enjoyed this little trick. In the next session, we're going to learn how to do this very nice start animation that you see very often on Apple websites and modern sites. I'll see you in the next session.